Hello again, everybody. Doc Sigmas here, back from my little, what shall we call it, a vacation from LPing. And I'm going to be bringing you my first LP from the Sega Genesis. Now, this is the introduction to the game, so while this is going on, you know, I'm just going to tell you some things about the game that I've picked, and you can feel free to read the introduction if you'd like. It's kind of an interesting little intro. It makes the game seem a lot darker than it actually is, at least at first. At first it's really not a dark game at all, it's very light-hearted and silly, and, and, and you know, stuff like that. But anyway, the game that I'm playing this time is called Soleil. It's an action RPG for the Genesis, or to be more specific, for the Sega Mega Drive. Now why would I say it's for the Mega Drive and not the Genesis? Because what we're playing tonight is a European release. Now this game was released in the United States, you know, in North America, but over here it was called Crusader of Senti, C-E-N-T-Y. But I'm going to be playing the European version, which is called Soleil. Now why am I playing the European version? Well, there's a few differences between the European version and the North American version. First of all, I personally find the dialogue in the North American version to be uh, not very good in some parts. Kind of corny, and there were just there were some translation issues, which kind of led me to believe that the game was translated for the European audience first, perhaps, or at least that that was their primary focus when releasing this game. Um, what else is different between the two? Well, some of the animals have different names, but uh, that's. It doesn't really come into play too much. Although it does interestingly cause one dungeon to have a very slightly different layout. Which if you're used to one version over the other, you may find yourself falling into bottomless pits because you're trying to spell the wrong word. But you really won't see that probably for at least a dozen videos going in. If you're familiar with Soleil or with Crusader of Senti, you might know what I'm talking about certain dungeon we have to be aware of those invisible tiles and well I'm already getting way the hell ahead of myself. So anyway this little intro is kind of interesting isn't it? No? It's not? Oh okay well sorry for making you put up with it then. But I figure I might as well use this time to talk about the game. You know it's it's an action RPG. You know, along, I guess you could say it's along the same lines as Legend of Zelda. The, the classic Legend of Zelda games you know with the overhead view. Although it, it's definitely is, you know, when I say action RPG, it's like, you know, nine parts of action, one part of RPG. So you won't have to worry about reading through pages and pages of text. But, you know, this game does move along at a good little clip. And I'm done blabbing about the game, and the introduction is done as well, so let's get this baby started. So we start off at the protagonist's house, and it's his 14th birthday, and all his friends came over, all three of them pretty nice, and so now that he's 14, his mom's going to be giving him a present. What kind of present would you say? Do the KY Jelly? Boston Pump Works? No, it's your dad's sword. And shield, but the shield doesn't do anything. Yeah, I mean, you know, your dad was awesome. I mean, he was killed in battle, but so you know, we might as well send you off to do the exact same thing. Otherwise, you get sent to jail. Or a motherwood or something. So let's see what my friends have to say. Now keep your pants on, kid. You'll be 14 soon enough. Oh, it is. You want it? I'll trade you something for it. Oh yeah, yours is brand new because your dad left you. And it's all your fault. And now we just have to kind of stay here. This is kind of weird until we hear some fireworks go off. Or something. If we try to leave. I'll be like, no, 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 everybody's come to see you. Which will be ironic considering what's about to happen. I hate this part. You just have to kind of hang around until something happens. Party, huh? There we go. There we go. Is somebody going somewhere? Somebody will be in a minute. Ah, oh, aim on. Smug son of a bitch. Hopefully you guys will grow to hate him as much as I do. Oh 
Oh yeah, we'll give you a nice send-off, because we'll be glad when you're gone. Oh, bull. Ah, the Rafalsia Training Ground. We'll be going there very soon. And look at that, just like that, all your friends, you know, just just run off to go see this hero. It's like the hell with your birthday party. We want to go see the hero. Oh, the hero, the hero. The hell with the birthday party. Oh, here's my dog. Here's my dog. <laughs> I don't know why, but I always find that hilarious. Don't feed him because he will get fat. <laughs> ah, and here's difference number one between the European version and the North American version. In the North American version, your dog's name is Mac. Or Max, I forget which. But most importantly, instead of woof woof, you know what he says? And this is reason enough to hate the North American version. He says, Bow wow wow yippee yo yippee yay. And I just want to strangle over his side to make him say that. You have to excuse me running into walls and stuff. For some reason the simulator isn't letting me use the, the normal control pad on the controller. It's forcing me to use the analog sticks, which is really kind of funky for a game that's not designed for them. Oh, it's Amon. Passed the trial, so now he's going to get you, yes, a nice sword. This sword will be of a great help to him, well, we'll see about that, won't we? Frickin' Amon. Jerk. So stab him in the face with a spoon. Oh, he recognizes me. The king, you know... Yeah, uh, well, I guess I'll get to that point later, but yeah, yeah. Everyone seems to think my father was awesome. Now that I'm 14, it's time to follow in his footsteps. So he's granted me access to the Refulsa training ground. Train hard, okay. I will, don't you worry. Well, I'm not even going to bother talking to anyone else, because I'm really only going to talk to people if it's required, or if they have something really interesting to say. So let's go off to the training ground. Let's see what the science says. Pick up your sword, boy, because now is the time to fight. I've always found that to be kind of creepy. But here we are on the overworld map. Now when you get to some place on the map, which is like a dungeon or like another place where you have to do like overworld stuff, once you beat that area you can skip over it on the map. You won't have to go through it again. Unless you choose to. Ah, oh, the sword thrower. Hmm, anything back here? Do you mind if I talk to your butt? Oh, you turn around, okay. Yeah, throwing your sword is really freaking important. You really have to learn how to throw your sword. In fact, it's so important that I'm actually going to go ahead and off-screen I'm going to grind up the 20 balance, which is the money in this game, that you need uh, purchase the ability to throw your sword. So I'll be okay, right back. back. Managed to get exactly 20 Molin. Now there's a couple of ways to get money in this game. I mean, besides beating enemies, you know, smash them to death with your sword. Early on, and pretty much also throughout the game, you'll also find a lot of coins by just cutting down trees, you know, cutting down bushes, smashing boxes. But the cool thing about this game is, except for right here at the beginning, you really never have to grab it. I mean, you never have to grind for experience because there's no such thing. And you also never have to grind for money because there's very little that you actually have to buy in this game. In fact, there's very little that's actually offered for purchase. And if that which is offered, there's this, which is absolutely essential. There's one other thing a little later on, which you'd be crazy not to spend money on. But other than that, it's all just optional stuff. Now, I'm starting to run out of time on this first video, so I might as well just talk to this guy and let him explain what this training course is all about, this Refulsia training ground. So it's basically there's three obstacle courses. There's a beginner's course in the middle, and then on the left there's the intermediate course, and on the right there's the expert course. Now, with what we currently have, what we currently know, we can do the beginner course, and in fact I'm going to do that in the next video. 
The intermediate and expert courses, though, we're going to have to wait on those. Because we don't have the ability to jump yet. That's something that you'll learn a little bit later. Actually, I haven't been to that plaza yet. If you say yes, then he says something about not having time to play, you know, something like that. But I really haven't been there yet, there's no reason to go. Finally, the expert course. Well, we can't do the accelerated jump, because we can't do the regular jump. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and call this a video. Next time, we're going to take on the beginner course. This is Doc Sigma, signing off. Have a good day.